If you ask 35 Foxes what A280 stands for, a lot of them will say something like Anti-Air Air Defense, when A280 really stands for Anti-Access Area Denial. But if the word air isn't even in the acronym A2AD, why do most foxes think all the A's have to do with counter air? It is because 1. AA in the Army stands for anti air gun, and AD stands for air defense. Number 2. Since World War I, air power has been critical to modern warfare. Number 3. Air superiority and supremacy is so important to U.S. Army combined arms operations that in 1982, FM 100 TAC 5, on operations, coined the term air land battle as the service's foundational concept of operations and targeting. This, of course, lasted until the advent of the current terms joint all domain and multi domain operations. Number four, in combat training centers and mission command training programs, we are very often given the task of eliminating mobile surface to air missile systems like the SA 20 so the Air Force can freely execute air land battle tasks. Number 5. Nearly every JADO and MDO video the DoD puts out depicts the military punching holes into a A2AD dome associated with air defense units. But if none of the A's in A2AD mean air, where does air defense come into play? The answer is right here with the components of IADS. Now, it is very important to remember all of these components of A2AD are always at play to make anti-access area denial possible. While IADS is a big component of A2AD, it is not the most important, and it is not the main element. If you remove any one of these A2AD components, A2AD gets exponentially harder to execute. So, if IADS is suppressed, defeated, neutralized, or destroyed, an enemy's A2AD network begins to fall apart. Therefore, let us journey toward understanding integrated air defense systems, or in our parlance, IADS. Hello and welcome, I am your host, and this is 35 Fox Talks. Before you is a description of all things that comprise IADS. On the ground, there are radars. There are high to medium altitude air defense systems, HIMADS, which span the spectrum of surface to air missile platforms like the SA-17s, SA-20s, SA-21s, Patriots, THAAD, etc. And interceptor aircraft like the MiG-25 Foxbat. There are also AA and AAA guns, 
short-range air defense systems, SHORADs, like the Avenger SA-15, HQ-17, Stinger, SA-7, FN-6, etc. There are also visual observers, aka visobs, or people on the ground with binos and cameras. And there are command centers. In the sky, we have aircraft with radars and mission command computers for early warning and or airborne command and control. Helicopters are available for search and rescue, close combat aviation operations, vertical takeoff and landing, VTOL requirements. Finally, we have traditional Air Force activities with fixed-wing aviation. Here we see it under the banner of Combat Air Patrols, aka CAPS. In regards to IADS operations, these CAPS can be Offensive Counter-Air Operations, OCA, where aircraft go into enemy airspace, set up a CAP, and hunt down enemy aircraft. Or they can be Defensive Counter-Air Operations, DCA, where aircraft set up CAPS either just in front or behind friendly positions to intercept incoming enemy aircraft. Now, there are other operations aircraft can take part in, like air interdiction, suppression of enemy air defense, destruction of enemy air defense, CDD, intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance operations, ISR, strategic bombing, etc. But those are more detailed conversations we'll have in later episodes, or things better left to Air Force experts. In the water, we have ships with air defense radars, air defense missiles, and air defense guns. We also have aircraft carriers with aircraft that do all the things we just discussed in the air domain. And finally, we have submarines that blend IADs with reconnaissance via underwater operations and long-range precision fires via cruise and ballistic missiles. Having viewed the macro-level components of IADs, we now turn to the workflow of the kill chain they are designed to nest within. The kill chain starts with the air surveillance function of detect, initiate tracking, identify, friend or foe, and type of acquisition, correlate between multiple separate radars or different sensor types, and maintain contact of acquisition track. From here, the track transitions to battle management function, where the threat is evaluated, engagement decision is determined, weapons type is selected, and engagement authority is either given or withheld. After the engagement authority gives the engage order, the IADS kill chain transitions to the weapons control function. Here, weapons pairing occurs, i.e. launchers and missiles are assigned, target is acquired, target is tracked, weapon is launched and guided, target is killed, and the effect against the target is assessed. See our episode Q&A on COFAMS and BDA for more information about the phases of battle damage assessments. Now, that abstract tutorial is all fine and dandy. However, putting it into practice and defeating it requires a whole bunch more knowledge. So, to escape the abstract, we return to our decisive action training environment, date scenario, for a more practical walkthrough. We return to the borders of Denovia, where diplomatic tension with Pirtuni and an increasingly unstable caucus area have placed us on a road to crisis. To revisit the regional situation, see our episode 1 underscore 3, Caucus Road to Conflict. Now, like all good foxes, executing step 3 of JIPO slash IPB, evaluate the threat, we work the problem by analyzing the composition, disposition, capabilities, and intent of the enemy. The three pillars of National Strategic Denovian IADs are the Strategic Forces, Air Force, and Navy. To review what national strategic means, please view our episode 1 underscore 2, Great Power Competition. Also, to review reading orders of battle and the role of strategic forces, view our episode 3 underscore 1, How to Read Orders of Battle. Now, for Denovia, the mainstay of their IADs is their Air Force, which is in line with how most real world militaries run their IADs efforts. Subordinate to the Denovian Air Force, for the purposes of National Strategic IADs, are the Air Divisions and 1st Air Defense Command. When we look at the 1st Air Defense Command, we find the following two command relationships, or COMREL, are at play. The first COMREL is that all 1st Air Defense Command Brigades are assigned to the command and are direct reporting units. The second COMREL is that all long-range air defense units have affiliated support relationships with the theater commands that they are positioned in, meaning 
everything they do is at the order of First Air Defense Command, but they work in order to support the requirements of their theater commander. These types of ComRel, while confusing, are extremely common in militaries, so let's break this down. The First Air Defense Command is responsible for ground-based detection and engagement of air threats to Denovia. Therefore, they have positioned their units across Denovia to monitor and protect its entire border. All of these formations report directly to the 1st Air Defense Command, so the command has a single clear picture of the airspace and their combat readiness. However, these same units exist on terrain that is owned by the Joint Forces Commands, known in Denovia as Theater Commands, the Western, the Southern, and the Eastern. These commands need their forces protected from threats and typically demand anything operating in their joint battle space not live rent-free and that those forces should help them with their missions. So, theater commanders are given affiliated support relationships where 1st Air Defense Command controls all the national strategic and theater strategic ground-based air defense options, but the 1st Air Defense Command must support the requirements of the Western, Southern, and Eastern theater commands. Swinging over to the Air Divisions, we find the Air Force is running the same dual-line Comrel with a number of squadrons held around the capital for national-level operations or allocation. Now, for us Army people who don't know what a large or small Air Force looks like, here is the scale. The largest Air Force in the world is the United States Air Force, with about 5,217 airframes in operation. Russia and China are in at number 2 and 3, with about 3,500 airframes each. The U.S. Navy is the fourth largest, with 2,623 airframes. Yes, the U.S. Army and Marine Corps have aircraft, but let's not get out of control here. Denovia altogether has 532 airframes, which is less than France, but more than the United Kingdom. Moving to the Denovian Navy, we see that out of some 92 vessels, only about 8 can be associated with IADs. That is because only the cruisers possess air defense systems meeting the medium and long-range specifications. The rest of the surface fleet has air defense systems that only protect the ships from close-range threats. Meanwhile, the Oscar-guided missile submarines don't possess air defense capabilities, but they can be used to conduct long-range precision strikes against allied airfields as part of a IAD strategy. Transitioning to Strategic Forces Command, we can understand that Space Command is responsible for space-based ISR and counter-ISR, along with space-enabled communications and counter-communications activities. The Infowar Command has responsibilities for cyber espionage and cyber-based interference in allied computer-based air attack methods. Finally, the Intelligence Directorate is responsible for identifying anti-Denovian war plans, vulnerabilities, and allied capabilities, and advising Denovian forces where to conduct their own deep strikes to prevent allied air operations. For disposition, we transition to the Battle Simulation Software of Command, Modern Operations by Matrix Games. Here we can see that Denovia has dispersed its ground-based air defense coverage across its borders in order to detect threats before they can range Denovia. White rings show the nominal maximum radar detect range of early warning radars, and the red rings depict the nominal maximum weapons engagement range of ground-based air defense systems. We can also see where the Air Force and Naval bases are located. Now the disclaimer with this disposition of forces is this is not a real-life depiction of a nation's force disposition. This is a combination of the game's in-house scenario and basing locations, plus Tradoc date force disposition and our own creative imaginations. Now, three things before we move to capabilities. First, we can see gaps in Denovia's north between air defense engagement rings. This is a standard problem with ground-based air defense assets. There is simply not enough of them to cover everything, especially when a country has a lot of mountains or swamps. These gaps are plugged by the Air Force caps, naval forces, ground force reserves, or just accepted as known risks. Second, these rings are an aggregate. When we turn off range ring aggregation, we can see that in some areas, there is a considerable overlapping of radar and weapons capabilities. This lets us know where enemy critical assets are located and where IADs will be very hard to neutralize. Third, we know there will be a lot of questions on how we decided to place systems where we did. We will explain all of that math in future videos.
capabilities. Unfortunately, we must skip this portion of the video because it will take hours to break down all of the capabilities of the air defense platforms on the screen. Therefore, you can expect a lot of videos and video recommendations in the coming months regarding IAD's platform capabilities. Intent. Because we are still at the competition phase of our scenario, the intent of Denovian IADs is to deter hostile action from other great powers. It is also to compel regional neighbors to bend the knee to Denovian demands under the belief Denovian IADs are so dominant that any long-range strike into Denovia will be defeated and that any Allied Air Force assistance will take months to be effective. Okay, Fusionistas, I think that is enough information for one episode. We have only begun to conduct JIPO on Step 3, so stay tuned for future videos. Until then, stay safe, and God bless.